John Gerotis, man of the people, candidate for New York State Senate, and accused Craigslist scammer. The arrest of smiling John Gerotis is the latest bizarre twist in the story of this political hotshot. Accused of balancing his personal budget with other people's cash. My worst fear came true in life. But if you ask him, this wannabe politico turned jailbird is now singing a different tune. I've been railroaded just like my fellow inmates up, up, down the line. Handsome, charming, confident. That's the vision of John Gerotis that beams from his billboards here in Harlem. Promising affordable housing for citizens of New York's 30th district. But Gerotis's campaign was hardly without controversy. At times, it seemed like a politically incorrect ticking time bomb just waiting to explode. Once, he reportedly emailed a journalist from New York television station WNBC, inviting her to a campaign fundraiser in Harlem featuring fried chicken, watermelon, and Kool-Aid. What did you think? Well, it um, looked like he had a pretty dark cloud over his head. But that's nothing compared to his latest troubles. Last fall, prosecutors say Gerotis advertised his apartment for rent on Craigslist, a gorgeous Hell's Kitchen condo in a multi-million dollar building, all for only around $1,100 a month. Mr. Gerotis would invite people to his apartment to uh, wine and dine them, and then once he uh, collected first, last security deposit, uh, he would come up with various reasons why they couldn't move in. When they say that New York is a tough city, they are not joking. Student Sarah Angela says she was taken in by the smooth-talking Senate candidate. You've got the lease signed. Mm -hmm. He asks you for how much money? 9000 total up front. And you give it to him? Yeah. But here's the problem. Sarah wasn't the only one. Author Nina Wolf says she gave Gerotis down payments of thousands of dollars. So did photographer Amanda Stevens and model McKinley Thomas. I sat down with a number of Gerotis's alleged victims. So how would you describe your impression of him when you first met him? Um, he looked like a playboy. You know, designer jeans, the very expensive white t-shirt that were all created, create the effect of I'm trying without trying and I'm spending a lot of money while doing it. They say the candidate's sales pitch starts with tall tales of life in the political spotlight. He told me that, that he was Sonia Sotomayor's uh, nephew. He had photographs all over the apartment. The Supreme Court justice. Correct. It was all very believable. But they say after he pockets the cash, Gerotis and the apartment suddenly become unavailable. And when it came time to move, um, it was a thousand excuses all day long. Text messages show excuses like, the elevator is still out of commission. I am on my way to the hospital. I have a lump on the left side of my body. Or simply, not happening today. Why? It's simple, prosecutors say. Gerotis had leased that gorgeous view to over a dozen hopeful renters, many with the same move-in date. You were sitting at the building with your movers, yeah. Amanda and Nina. You were on the stoop in Brooklyn waiting for your movers. That's correct. And I was in Washington Heights waiting for the movers that he promised me. So you were all about to move in at the same time? Yeah, the same I was day. waiting, too, at the hotel you were while all of this was happening. I'm like, what is he doing? But I didn't know he was doing this. None of us so. did. When the renters do find out, it's a mad scramble to get their money back. They say that's when dealing with Gerotis gets even more bizarre. I chased that man all over the city. He told me to stay and meet him here, there, and everywhere. He calls me and says, yeah, I'm sorry, my sister just died, and da-da-da. And I'm like, what do you mean she died? He was like, she was here in the apartment, you know, she's been sick. And he starts to, like, fake cry. Peter, who asked us not to use his last name, was on the hook for $15,000 and says he had recorded conversations. And you're going to get your money. I'm on your side, Peter. I want you to get him because it's no fun for me having you hound me. Trust me, I, I'd, rather t I'd rather give birth to a baby whale to my <laughs> all right? You so. also did, uh, in a sense, proposition me on, on text. When I said I have no place to sleep, he said, well, you can sleep in my, you can sleep here if you want and spend the night. And then he texted me, but I snore. 
Uh, I was like, oh my God. You know, I mean, he's really off the wall. Lawyer Pierre Gooding says Gerotis' scheme added up to a hefty payday. Right now, we believe it's about $15,000, but that's what we know about. But instead of smiling all the way to the bank, Gerotis finds himself smirking all the way to the slammer. Arrested on 10 counts of grand larceny, two counts of scheme to defraud, and one count of identity theft. In fact, he actually had to sit out last November's election because he was in jail awaiting trial. It was just, I don't know, it just made me even more furious about what was going on. He received close to 5% of the vote. Many people are wondering, why wasn't he removed from the ballot? The answer is, we have in the United States a presumption of innocence. And just because he was charged with a crime, until he is convicted, he is presumed to be innocent and has a right to be on the ballot. Attorney Lawrence Mandelker says legally an ex-con has as much right as anyone to run for office. So would the following people be eligible to run for elected office? A convicted murderer? Yes. A rapist? Convicted. A, a convicted serial rapist? Yes. A convicted pedophile? Yes. Is there any offense that disqualifies somebody from running for elected office? No. That's really good news for John Gerotis. Not only is he sitting in jail, accused of a Craigslist rental scheme, but we found he also has a history of being on the wrong side of the law. In 2001, Gerotis was put on probation for petty theft. Then 2008, even more trouble. Gerotis was accused in a check cashing scheme. He pled guilty to grand larceny and served jail time. But now he sits in a Manhattan jail awaiting trial. Hi, hey, John. He's accused of renting the same apartment to more than a dozen different people at the same time. Prosecutors claim he never turned over a working key and kept most of the money. This is your chair right here. Gerotis welcomed Crime Watch Daily behind bars for an exclusive interview to campaign for his freedom. And this is where he proved to be the consummate politician. You have more than a dozen accusers, people who say that in total you took more than $50,000 from them. Did you do that? No, I, I, no, I did not, and I, and I can't continue to answer these questions. Okay. And these accusers, by the way, it breaks my heart that they're, they're, whoever they are, that they're going through this, right? And I wish I could respond the way I want to, but, but I cannot. Did you list your apartment for rent? I, I can't discuss anything else, Amy. With all due respect, of course. And do you want to explain why you can't comment on this time, uh, on because the particulars? Would, just like everyone else, it, would be, it wouldn't behoove me to do so. I'm fighting for my freedom. I'm fighting for my life. As much as, and I will share the entire story at some point, now it's just not the right time, Amy. Nina Wolf was one of the few who says she got her money back after hounding Gerotis. I chased him all over the place, all over town. In fact, one block from here, I got it back. But other angry renters claim they're tired of waiting for Gerotis to pay them back. They say he used his political platform to steal their trust, and more importantly, their money. How did you feel when you discovered that this apartment was not actually for rent? <laughs> Devastated. Devastated. Oh, my God. That was terrible. Right after the rage kicks in and you think, mmm, no, you don't get to get away with this. The last time the public saw you, you were smiling and you had just been arrested. Why were you smiling? Well, that, that's a good question. I think I was nervous, and I, uh, the absurdity of me being arrested at all, I, I, I couldn't believe, I thought I was being spoofed, to be honest with you. No matter the outcome of this case, John Gerota says his political future is bright. Sooner or later, I'll be a free man and I'll run again. And I can guarantee you... You'll run I, again. I, I'm going to run for the rest of my life in New York. And Gerota says it won't be from the cops. It will be for office. He promises to fight on a platform of parking tickets, potholes, and you're not going to believe this one. Uh, Landlord-tenant issues, right? There are a lot of... Uh, crooked landlords who tried to take advantage of people from other countries, immigrants especially, who don't know what their rights are. But so, some people might hear you say that, and they're going to say he's being accused of running a Craigslist rental scam, and he's talking about trying to help people with landlord rights. 
All I can tell you in response to that, if this was a movie, the people would be siding with me right now and cheering me on. There are two sides to every story. That's what makes this country great. And I believe in the justice system, and I'm just going through the motions now. Are you innocent? I. I cannot comment whether I'm innocent or guilty. You're asking me today on camera, right? I, I'd say yes, of course. I haven't had my opportunity to explain anything. I've been railroaded just like my fellow inmates uh, uh, down the line. You've been called a liar, a con man, calculating, a psychopath, a sociopath, wow. Amy, all these uh, things. It's very hard to, uh, to have someone tell you and, and it hurts to be honest with you. Are you any of those things? No. And what will you say to people who say, this guy is crazy if he thinks he's going to run for office again and win. It's America, you can do anything.